Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen? Today I wanna to talk to you about why fear is paralyzing every good thing in your life. Now, hundreds or thousands of years ago, when our ancestors were in Africa, they were utilizing fear as a feedback loop, as a mechanism to learn to avoid death. And what I mean by that is when a tiger, a saber-toothed tiger or a lion is chasing you, your fear mechanism and the hormones that follow that fear mechanism absolutely need to kick in in order for you to survive. So fear has a very important role in our lives and it keeps us safe, it keeps us sound, it keeps us in a stable place. We've all heard the acronym FEAR, false evidence appearing real. And more often than not, fear is in fact that. It is false evidence appearing real. So I have two stories for you today that I wanna share that illustrate the power of fear when there is nothing to be afraid of. So there are two stories. And honestly, I don't know how true these are, so take them with a grain of salt, but the stories illustrate my point very powerfully. The first story is about a guy who worked at a restaurant and he was closing the restaurant and he's the last one there. So he goes into the fridge to put something away, something like that, and the door closes and locks behind him. Now, in his mind, he thinks, shit, I just locked myself in the freezer. He thought he was in the freezer, or he thought it was gonna turn into a freezer, something like that. And they found him in the morning dead. They checked the temperature and it was mildly cool, like literally not even fridge temperature. That's the first story. The second story is about a guy who they told him that um, they were gonna draw blood from him for as long as it took him to pass out and then they would stop. And this was, I guess, some prisoner or something, some crazy experiment. So they put him in a room and they did this overnight and they hooked him up and he heard this sort of like dripping overnight and it kept going and going and going. Turns out the setup or the experiment was set up wrong and they were not drawing his blood at all. The whole time he thought his blood was being drawn and they found him in the morning dead also. Now, these two stories are obviously a bit extreme, but they illustrate a point. And that point is that fear does create a false sense of reality. So fear puts you into your fight or flight response. Fear puts you into this fight or flight response, but oftentimes we also freeze during this response. So we just lock up and we don't do anything. Fight being say yes to a situation, flight being no, I'm out. But oftentimes we can actually lock up. So. What science has taught us and what we've found is that fear is actually harmful to the physical, emotional, mental body. It actually stiffens and hardens our arteries. Uh, there's there's uh, animals in nature such as different like uh, rabbits and different animals that when they are hunted by their prey, they will run for their life. And even though they are not attacked, you can look this up, even though they are not attacked, they will you know, run and hide and then they'll get into their hiding place and their heart will be racing so fast that they'll literally have a heart attack and die. So fear is paralyzing and crippling and it literally has the power to kill us. Most people talk about the placebo effect, which is the positive uh, results of thinking positively. What most people don't talk about or aren't aware of is the nocebo effect, N-O-C-E-B-O, which is the effect of thinking neg negatively and believing negatively and having those uh, repercussions come back into your life. Fear actually weakens the physical body. The arteries surrounding the heart, the nervous system, uh, they become hardened and more stressed, which causes people to be more likely to experience cardiac arrest or a uh, heart attack. Fear also emotionally cripples us. It cripples our desires, our dreams, our goals, our aspirations because it blinds us from the truth that we are in fact able. It blinds us from our own ability and capability to create, produce, perform, innovate, and be anew in something that we desire. And for some reason, more so here in the Estados Unidos than any other country in the world, we have been ingrained and trained and molded, quite literally molded by fear. Our actions and every step that we take has fear in its predetermined step moving forward. It's like, it's as if we have these blinders on and fear is, oh, can't, oh, can't fear, fear, oh, can't, oh, I'll just stay on my little path with my little box here and continue forward. And we're paying attention to some free form of fear, which is called the media news entertainment, yet we pay money 
to go to escape rooms and watch horror films. So we're paying attention with our mind and our consciousness. And then we pay money, which is our energy and our time and our consciousness. So we're sold on fear both just by hearing it or by going and uh, you know, pursuing it. Like, I want to pursue some fear today. Um, and what I've been trying to say the whole time is that fear is not meant to be wastefully ejaculated at the feet of mind-numbing entertainment. That's what I've been trying to say all along. Y'all ain't listening to me. This is the truth, I promise you. So when we recognize that our fear has a purpose and our fear has a position and a posture in our lives, that gives us the dignity and the grace and the bravery to overcome the meaningless, useless, deluded, deceptive, and fake forms of fear that have kept us trap our, trapped our entire lives. And when we recognize that fact and when we recognize that truth, when we have the eye of the tiger facing the tiger that's about to tear our fucking face off, the arrow of love, the arrow of truth comes shooting from behind us, piercing the very heart of the tiger that we had the bravery and the courage to face in our own lives. And it is only then that we recognize that faith and love casts out all fear. 1 John 4.19 says that perfect love casts out all fear. I'm getting goosebumps saying this. What is perfect love? Perfect love is agape, unconditional love. What is agape, unconditional love? Unconditional love means that's the, there's no conditions. There's no conditions. I don't care what your skin color is. I don't care what your gender is. I don't care what country you're from. I don't care your socioeconomic status. I don't give a fuck about any of that because I have perfect love for you as I choose to have perfect love for myself. And if we walk in perfect love, it gives us the bravery, it gives us the tools, it gives us the arrows, it gives us the shield, it gives us everything that we need to face and conquer fear in our lives, the true fear. Not the fear that we dabble our toes in and wastefully ejaculate at the feet of entertainment for, no, the true fear, the thing that you've been facing your entire life or that you've been facing for the last five years or 10 years that you have not yet stepped up to the plate to face. This, my friends, is the bravery that is required, which recognizes that a high dose of perfect love is required for that bravery to sprout, for that bravery to grow, so that perfect love in your life may cast out all fear and your life and the lives of those that you love and that you uh, appreciate. So, just keep in mind that the media is selling fear. The media is selling fear. The news is selling fear. The media is selling fear. All these movements that create separation are based on the premise of fear. They're based on the premise of difference. They're based on the premise of distinction. They're based on the very primal urge to survive. And the problem is that we are way past that as a society. Yes, there are some people still confused in their Babylonian ways, but as a society, we are far past this. So to engage and tiptoe into these fear-based ideas, thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and to engage in that just simply tells me one thing, that maybe there is something in your life. Maybe deep down there is some sort of fear, some sort of goal, some sort of dream, something, something hidden that isn't being addressed by your soul, but instead is being addressed by your ego because your ego can banter and argue and debate and stand on higher ground all day long. But the soul, my friends, the soul has roots as deep as the ocean. And we haven't explored the depths of the ocean yet, so that just tells you how deep the love, the perfect love that the soul can produce, can give, and shine on in the world. So I would encourage you today to focus on pure, perfect love, to find perfect love in your life personally, so that you can be a reflection, a projection of perfect life, love, excuse me, into the lives of others. I love you, I appreciate you, thank you for watching. Please leave your comments below and have an amazing day. I'll see you in the next video.